Hey everybody, this is Brian here. I'm awake, are you? And if you're watching this channel, you are awake and you're probably watching other channels like mine. What kind of channel is this? This is a pre-tribulation rapture channel. We could talk about events that are pointing to the tribulation, which are pointing to a pre-tribulation rapture. No one knows the day or the hour of the rapture, but the events all around us every day are definitely indicating that we're about to enter the tribulation. And I've got to, there's so much to talk about on the news. I, I have to pick and choose. My time is very short sometimes. Uh, I work a full-time job. I do this um, as my ministry to just get the word out that the rapture is about to happen and the church, the born again believers of this world need to prepare um, and just get ready to see our Lord. There's really no pre preparing for it. If you're saved, you're already prepared. But um, if you're living a life that's not pleasing to the Lord, change your ways and go the other way. Repent and turn around and go the other way. You'll still go to heaven, but there's so many people out there that are dying and going to hell, family, friends, relatives, all all our co-workers, just strangers on the street that you meet every single day um, are all, if they don't know the Lord, they're going to die and go to hell or when we're raptured, which is very, very soon, they're going to be entering the, tri the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, man, is that close. And I've got an article today I'm going to read. It's actually very disturbing. I'm going to let you know right now, this article is very disturbing to read and just give you a warning and you might already know about this but i'm going to read it and it indicates just where we're at in society where we're at in a world and i'll make some comments about it when i when i'm reading it um but before i get into that if you don't know jesus in your heart today uh you need to ask him in your heart because the time is short if you die and before before the rapture or actually before the tribulation starts you're going to go to hell if you see the rapture happening and you're left behind, you're most likely going to die on this earth. Not 100%, but I would bet against you because the events that are in Book of Revelation from chapter 6 through the chapter 18 are horrific, to say the least. And so you need to ask Jesus in your heart. Just first believe that, not believe, confess that you're, to God, you're a sinner. You need forgiveness. We all need forgiveness, every one of us. And that Jesus... Um, died, buried, and rose again on the third day. His blood, his sacrifice on that cross paid for your sins. It's, it had to pay for it. Israel did it once a year to cover the sins of the nation for once a year. He did it once forever. No other sacrifice has to be given. It's been given. And if you don't do that, don't ask him to come into your heart. Confess your mouth, believe in your heart, you shall be saved. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's very simple to do. It just takes a few seconds of your life. A few seconds of your life will change your life for eternity. For those of us who are believers already, praise God, because folks, saints, I... I, I read your comments. Believe me, I've been so busy at work. I've been reading your comments. I haven't been commenting in, in, as in-depth as I usually do. Some of you I have, some I haven't. It just depends on my time that I have to do that. But I, I, I'm I, on board. I'm ready to go home. I know so many believers, uh, even where I live, are just like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done. It's just get out of here. This is, And it's not because this generation, the one we're living in right now, is just wanting to escape. It's because this generation is seeing things that we never thought we'd see in human history that are hard to watch. The generations before us, even the recent ones before us, hadn't seen or imagined what we're seeing today. And in getting into that, I'm going to read something right now that makes my point of the things that we're seeing. And just going to do this one article today. Up oh, here we go. Get my iPad here. Ha! Huh. Here we go, folks. Um, you probably already have read this. It's been on the internet. It's been on the news. This is on the web page of an end of the American dream. <laughs> Are they really eating our pets? Uh, let me see. I don't want to read all that. I'm gonna get down. Okay, hold on a second here. 
Okay. He get, this guy who read this article, wrote this article, gave a disclaimer not to offend anybody, but I'm just going to read where it gets right into it, okay? That's why I passed. You can read this yourself. Uh, I didn't want to get into everything he said. He was basically apologizing and making sure he wasn't offending anybody. I'm just going to read what's happening. The Haitian population of Springfield, Ohio, has become, I think it's Ohio. Let me double check. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I think it is. At this moment, there is a tremendous amount of discussion on social media about what is happening in the city of Springfield, Ohio. The Haitian population of Springfield has become very large, and Newsweek is reporting that it is being alleged that some of these people have been killing and eating folks' pets. Springfield, which had a population of around 60,000, has recently been at the center of an immigration debate with its Haitian community growing to between 15 and 20,000 over the last four years, according to its officials. There's 60,000 in the whole town. The past few days have seen local reports that some of these people have been killing and eating folks' pets. Huh. Residents of Springfield, Ohio, are reporting that Haitians are eating their family pets, another gift of the Biden mass immigration replacement plan. Liberals will soon be lecturing Americans on what they need to be sensitive to Haitians' culture and accept that this is a new normal. I'm not going to read on. I don't, I'm not going to get on to that one. Um, let's see here. The, these Haitians are running into trash cans, running into buildings. They're flipping cars in the middle of the streets. The man added, this is a report of one of the witnesses, they are in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them. They are eating them. Another local told me that the city, that she uh, can't believe it anymore, she can't take it anymore as Haitian migrants are littering on her yard and harassing her and her husband. Residents Glenda Bailey told the city they have become the occupiers. What they have done is they've replaced the population in Springfield. Tensions came to a boil last year after illegal immigrants from Haiti caused a school bus crash last August, killing 11-year-old uh, Aiden Clark. Uh, let's see down here. It's a long article. I'm picking and choosing. I want you can read the whole article yourself. I'm leaving some stuff out. It's I just don't want to, I, I want to stick to the story. Um, an Ohio woman was arrested after she allegedly killed a cat and began eating the feline in front of her neighbors. You get the point. Just download the article. It's on. What is it on? Sorry, guys. End of the American Dream. I I skipped around a lot. There's things I didn't want to read. But they're going around. Fifteen to twenty thousand in a city of sixty thousand. Bolden. Being aggressive. Stealing dogs, taking dogs and cats off the street and eating them. I didn't read it. I couldn't find it. I read it this morning where a Haitian grabbed a duck from a park and ripped and bit its head off and then took it to eat it. This may be normal in their culture. Okay, let's just say that, but it's not normal here. And where's the authorities to stop this? This isn't normal here. If any of us in any of your towns where you live, in the, especially in the U.S., did this, you think you wouldn't be staying overnight in the county jail? But they're getting away with this. Why are they getting away with this? Well, there's a lot of speculation. You can go this way, that way. It's just, it's just boil it down to what's really going on. We're in the last days, right before the rapture. 
the leaders of our country here and a lot of the countries in the Western in the Western civilization out there around the world are allowing this these immigrants to come in from all different nations. And I'm not picking on just the immigrants, okay? I'm not picking on just the Haitians because there's good Haitians. There's good, there's good Iranians out there. There's good people. There's good people all over. The, the Iranian people are just being brutalized by their leaders over there. It's not the people. It's the government. It's what's going on. What's being allowed? Why are they allowing this? They want to tear down our society when they want to cause chaos. They want to cause craziness, which is chaos. They want to do this. They want people to be in fear. They want people to act out. They want to. They want a civil war here in the U.S. They haven't gotten it yet, and they've tried their hardest to get it to get a civil war going. They want all this craziness and chaos, so then they can bring in their militaries and then bring in martial law and then do what they really wanted to do in the first place, which is control everything about our life, everything. That's why the authorities aren't doing anything. They're allowing it. I think I could be wrong what's going to happen if this keeps going on and we're still here. The Second Amendment's going to come into play, which it should. Protect your families, your properties. Until we're out of here, we live here. I don't really talk about this much, right? I, I talk about the pre-trip, which we, which what I'm talking about. But we need to protect our families until he comes. When Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall, paraphrasing without going to all the scripture, he was literally, they were building it with a sword in one hand and a shovel in the other. Because the enemies wanted to tear down the wall as they were building it. So they had to put guards and then the workers carried their weapons with them as they were working and they were alert. What God what needs to happen, God needs to save people more and more. A lot more people, I think, God is in the process of saving as we speak. That's why he hasn't come back yet. It's hard to watch this stuff. It's just hard to watch. And there's other things they're doing out there that way worse than this. So what do we do as believers? What do we do as born again, spirit filled believers? We pray for our neighbors, our family, our friends. We pray that God protects us and keeps us safe and saves people and changes the heart and that people will repent and turn around from their evil deeds. And we pray, God, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Because we are the generation that's going to see the rapture. And we see these events. These articles are hard to read sometimes. That one's a hard one. And things are not normal. We're never going to go back to normal. The new normal is there's no new normal. There's no normal. The new normal is going to be when the rapture happens. And we hear that trumpet blast. And the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise, that's what we're looking for. That's the normal we're looking for. We're going to be in heaven for so long, which is forever, which is a long time where I come from, <laughs> that we, we are not going to remember this stuff. And I was thinking about this this morning when I was getting ready to go to work. As long as we've been on the earth right now, however, if you're 20 years old, you're 10 years old, you're 100 years old, it doesn't matter. What how many years you got on the earth is a speck of time for a believer compared to how long you're going to be in heaven, which is forever. So once we get to heaven, we know Revelation chapter 4, chapter 5 is a worship service. Chapter 19 is the return of the Lord. Chapter 20, uh, 20, 21, and 22 is the setting up the millennium and then the new heavens and new earth. But what about after all that? We're going to be busy. You know, you have errands to do. You have things to do in this life. You provide for your family. You go to work. You do this, that. What are we going to be doing forever? Are we just going to be sitting around doing nothing? No. God has a city prepared for us, a heavenly scene that's going to come down out of heaven. It's going to orbit the earth and give light to the earth. 
And no, only those names who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life can enter it. No more idolatry, no more thieves, no more murderers, liars. All, I'm going through just paraphrasing like crazy here. None of that evil stuff will ever enter that city. You'll never have to worry about locking your doors. You'll never have to worry about leaving your home. You'll never have to worry about your children, ever. You'll never have to worry about your safety, ever. No more depression, no more crime, no more just all this junk, all this stuff I read. I won't have to read this stuff in heaven. I won't have to deal with this. You won't have to deal listening to it. So as hard as it is to read this article this morning about what's happening in the U.S. and around the world, it's but a faint speck of time compared to what's about to happen to us. We are about to go to heaven. This is another example of lawlessness, of just craziness in this world that's happening right before our eyes. It's another sign. Man's depravity is hitting rock bottom. And when we hit rock bottom, that's when Jesus comes back. And we're at rock bottom right now. We are at the bottom. And then wait till the tribulation gets here. We're going to go subterranean. It's going to be so bad. But we're not going to be here. We're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, saints of God. Saints of God out there, men and women of God. You are men and women of the most holy God. The one who sits on the throne in Revelation 4 and 5, you can call him Abba. He says today, he says today through this servant, through the word of God, you are his sons and daughters. You can call him dad. And what dad is going to leave their children behind in a place that's going to brutalize them for seven years? Not a good dad. He's a good father. He's our heavenly father. He's Abba. Abba is coming for us. He's going to send his son. Go get your bride. My plan is going to be finished. It's going to be finished. And I'm starting it now. Go get your bride, son. It's time. It's time for the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's time to celebrate with your bride. You're finally going to bring your bride, son, into the heavenly kingdom. And you will drink of this cup with them in the kingdom. Because that's what you said to the disciples at the Last Supper. The next time you drink of this will be in my kingdom. And we are almost in his kingdom any moment. All these signs are pointing to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is about to come down to the earth and reign forever. That's what's going on. Put all this evil aside, all these earthquakes and all this, all this just garbage is going on around us every single day and in our lives. It's, it's a speck of time compared to the eternity. We're going to be in heaven. You're going to be so used to heaven. Actually, you'll probably never get used to it. You'll probably pinch yourself every day that you're there. It's a real physical place, folks. It's in another dimension, but it's just as physical as where we live today. The ground you walk on is solid ground. You're walking around the streets of your cities, around this world, or getting your cars, or whatever you're doing, the earth underneath your feet. It's more solid in heaven. There's no earthquakes in heaven. There's no cracks opening up and seizures opening up in heaven. There's no sinkholes in heaven. There's no sinking sand. There's no turmoil in heaven. You're on solid streets of gold that never move and never will ever. They don't get potholes in heaven. There's no maintenance crews up there fixing the streets and buildings of heaven. It's made perfect for everlasting because God made it himself. That's what's waiting for us right now. That. And that is what God wants us to focus on. Do not think of the things on the earth, but think of the things in heaven. For the things that you see are temporary, but the things you don't see are eternal. Eternity is coming for us. The things we don't see are more real than the car or house or building you're in right now. That's all going to go away. That's never going to be seen again. But as there's a building made for you, adorned by God and ready and waiting in heaven, he's going to give you the keys to your new mansion in heaven very, very soon. This started in Genesis. His plan of redemption started right after the fall of, of Adam and Eve. And, he's, and the, now the plan is almost complete. He started it there. After the fall, he could have he just said, you know, everybody done. I'm done. Everybody out of the pool. 
I'm not doing this. I'm getting rid of everybody. I'm getting rid of the stars. I'm getting rid of the planets, the animals. I'm vaporizing everything. I'm going to completely start over. Or he could have said, I'm not going to do it. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to make, man, I'm not doing anything like that ever again. But did he say that? Did God say that? No. Talk about a patient person. Talk about a person who's laid back and patient. God the Father. No, he didn't do that. What did he do? He did the insane thing that you and I would never do. <laughs> he, had, he made Adam Eve clothes. He continued to supply needs for them. Mankind started populating the earth. Then we had the flood and we had all that stuff going on. And then the Tower of Babel, man tried to be God again. He had to come down and confuse the languages. Every time man tries to be God, God has to stop it. Man's trying to be God right now. Man's making artificial intelligence. He's got AI. Man is arrogant. Mankind is arrogant, and the arrogance is going to destroy mankind. But thank God, believers, that you're saved, that you have the power of God in you, because he's about to send his son back. He's about to finish his plan that he started in Genesis. He's about to finish it. The last seven years and in the end of that, we are a new heavens, a new earth will be after the millennium. We are we are blessed to be alive. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life that's not good. You could probably have the same thing, but you know what? In the shadow of things to come, it makes me go through another day. Just one more day. And that's today. I love you guys. I I just think about this stuff and I read this garbage I read this morning to you. I'm even I shouldn't even read it probably to you, but I did because I wanted to give you a picture. This is where we're living right now. And the, and the, the insane thing about that article is nobody's stopping it. That's what bothers me. There's evil in this world, but they're supposed to be good to combat it. No, not anymore. Why? Because God's allowing mankind to go down this road to prepare them for the tribulation. And let me tell you, if the tribulation looks like it's going to start, when is the rapture? I'd say any moment. I love you guys so much. I see your comments and all the things you're going through. My heart goes out to you. I pray for you guys all the time. I see these other channels having issues with their channels, giving the same message. You know why? Satan wants to shut us up, keep us quiet, and not to say anything. He, Satan thought he won. He kept all this out of the church for decades. Just the church here or there was talking about these things. He thought he won. He thought, oh, I got the secret. The, the best kept secret of the church is the rapture. I got it covered up. And then he invented the internet. I can use the internet for all this evil stuff. The enemy's saying, Satan's saying, oops, what's this? They're talking about God on the internet. They're talking about the rapture, pre-trib rapture. They're talking about salvation on my airwaves, the prince of power of the air. They're using my airwaves. Yeah, we are. You know why Satan are using airwaves? Because God's given us the authority to do it. You think he's happy? He's not happy. Not happy. Satan's not happy. He's ticked off. But it doesn't matter if he's ticked off because his days are numbered. My, my days and your days, there's no number to them. They're going for infinity. What a hope we have in Jesus. What a hope of salvation. What did, I'll finish with this. What did the disciples say? They, he sent them out two by two and they, they came back all excited. We we cast out demons. We healed the sick. We did this. We did that. They were all like just little kids. Like, man, it was so fun. It was so cool. What did Jesus say to, say to him? Says, what did he say to them? Don't rejoice because you can cast out demons and heal the sick. Rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. That's life for us in a nutshell. That's it. We are written in Lamb's book of life, period. Period. Everything else after that, On this earth, everything after that is irrelevant. When we get to heaven, wow. We're almost in heaven. Heaven is knocking at the door. Guys, I'll see you in the clouds very soon. It's Brian out. Bye-bye.